Hey guys, welcome back to Med School Moose. This video is going to be the first in a new series for USMLE Step 1 Antibiotics. Thank you so much to everyone who responded to my poll. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, on my YouTube channel under the Community tab, I post a lot. I post a lot of polls there. I love to get your guys' input and opinions. So I posted one about this video series. People said that they would definitely watch it. So I went ahead and decided to make it. So this is going to be the first video. We are going to be talking about vancomycin today. Couple quick disclaimers. I know the title says USMLE Step 1, but this information is also absolutely high yield for Comlex Level 1. These videos are going to be a little bit shorter. I'm going to kind of go through the high yield antibiotics. I'm just going to go through the high yield information. If you're looking for more in depth uh, videos about pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics, this is not what this is about. It's just rapid fire. So that eventually, when I've made a lot of these videos, you can kind of just go through the play playlist and, you know, watch a lot of the videos in order and kind of just get some, some information that way uh, when your brain gets tired. So we're going to start with a quick outline. This is how I'm going to hopefully break up uh, all of the antibiotic videos. We're going to first talk about the classification of each antibiotic. Uh, then we're going to talk about the mechanism of action. We're going to talk about the uses for that antibiotic. And then finally, the side effects. So going to keep it pretty simple. Going to try and do this every time so that it, you know, it's organized very well. So with vancomycin, let's go ahead and get started. In terms of the classification, there's not too much to know here. Technically, it's a glycopeptide. Vancomycin is kind of a drug on its own. It doesn't belong to any specific class, but it's classified as a glycopeptide just based on its um, chemical structure, which you can see here. This is probably not very high yield for USMLE or Comlex, but I put the word on the page so that if it does come up, vancomycin is a glycopeptide. The more important thing is, is focusing on the mechanism of action. So vancomycin, for the most part, is bactericidal, which means that when it interacts with bacteria, it's going to kill the bacteria. The only important caveat there is that it is bacteriostatic against Clostridium difficile, which means that it's going to prevent growth, but it's not going to kill it. So vancomycin, mostly bactericidal, but it is bacteriostatic against Clostridium difficile. And the actual mechanism of action, we don't need to get too into the weeds about this, but it's going to inhibit cell wall synthesis. Um, so here's kind of a diagram of that. Uh, I've blocked a little bit out. Uh, we're going to come back to this a little bit later. But basically what's going on is it binds to the D-alanine, D-alanine moieties uh, on cell walls. So And it prevents cross-linking. So we can see in the diagram here, these two little red circles at the bottom, these are the D-alanine structures of two different... Uh, portions of the cell wall, vancomycin is going to bind to this right here on both of these um, portions of the cell wall, and it's going to prevent the cross-linking en enzyme for, for linking these two together. So that portion of the cell wall is not going to be formed, and obviously the cell wall is so important for keeping things in the cell, keeping things out of the cell. So if it doesn't have that cell wall, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kill the bacteria. That's why it's bactericidal. In terms of the uses of vancomycin, it's mostly going to be used against gram-positive organisms. It's not very effective against gram-negative, so you definitely want to know that. And you may already know this. You will definitely start to know this um, as you start working more in the hospital. But vancomycin is kind of one of those big drug, big gun uh, antibiotics. It's going to be for multi-drug-resistant organisms. One of the most common being MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. If you think MRSA, you're going to be thinking vancomycin because that's pretty much the treatment for it. The other use is, uh, like I said, Clostridium difficile. Um, there are some other multidrug resistant organisms such as Enterococcus, and we're going to talk a little bit about that later. Um, but gram-positive organisms, mostly multidrug resistant organisms. The only other thing that I will note here for Clostridium difficile, remember it is bacteriostatic, not bactericidal. Typically, vancomycin is given as an IV medication. But for uh, Clostridium difficile and for pseudomembranous colitis, it is going to be oral. That's probably a little bit too much detail for the step one and level one formation, but it is just an important caveat that you should know just in case. Now, in terms of the side effects of vancomycin, there's a couple. Um, it's nephrotoxic, so it can be damaging to the kidneys. It's ototoxic. It can be damaging to the ears and to the hearing. Thrombophlebitis and red man syndrome. Now, a couple quick notes about this. The nephrotoxicity and the ototoxicity were mostly seen with the early impure forms of vancomycin. Now that, you know, we've had the, van the drug for many decades now, we've gotten a lot more pure forms. We're not seeing it as much. It is still something you absolutely need to know for level one and step one. Um, but in reality, we're not seeing it as much as we used to. 
to kind of help monitor for these side effects. It can be useful to man uh, to monitor serum levels of vancomycin. So, uh, you know, you'll be ordering peak and trough levels of the medication, uh, the serum levels of that when you're in the hospital. Um, obviously, with any drug that you're going to get, uh, anaphylaxis is a possibility. So that could also happen with vancomycin. But really, the more important thing and the, probably the most testable here is red man syndrome. Uh, and what this is basically is it's an anaphylactoid reaction that causes an erythematous pruritic rash. So it's red and it's itchy. It mostly involves the face and the neck, as you can see here, as well as the upper torso. Again, this was mostly associated with the impure form of vancomycin. We don't see this very much, but it is still very testable and it does still happen. The best things to do to prevent red man syndrome is just slow infusion of the drug. If you infuse it too fast, that's an increased risk. So slow infusion of the drug, and you can also pre-treat the patient with antihistamines, Benadryl, that kind of thing. Um, but definitely need to know what red man syndrome is and make that association with vancomycin. The last thing that I want to talk about in this video as we're getting to the end here is resistance. Now, not every antibiotic that we talk about is going to have resistance, but vancomycin is one that does, and it's actually pretty important. So the mechanism of resistance that bacteria go through um, to kind of get away from vancomycin, instead of having that D-alanine, D-alanine moiety here at the end, they switch it to a D-alanine D-lactate. So you can see that little red uh, circle has gone to a purple square. And now because of that conformation change in the amino acids, the vancomycin cannot bind, tries to bind, can't do it. And because the vancomycin cannot bind, the cell wall cross-linking enzyme is able to come in, able to cross-link those two parts of the cell wall, and it can actually form the cell wall. So that is a mechanism of resistance. One of the big uh, microorganisms that can do that is Enterococcus. You will start hearing this a lot more once you're in the hospital, but VRE literally stands for vancomycin-resistant Enterococcus, and this is one of those organisms that can do that. So really important to know that for vancomycin in particular. That is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you're getting those updates. Make sure you're responding to those polls. But good luck with your studying.